Hey folks, welcome back to another Top 10 List, where I'm doing this Top 10 all by my lonesome. The last couple of ones that I've done like this, uh, I did one for Emperor S4 games, and I also did one for Fantasy Flight games as well. They were both pretty well received, so we'll keep striking while the iron is hot, as it were. Uh, so we're going to do my Top 10 Kamon games, or Simon games, that are currently available, I guess you could say. I don't know if these are all... Uh, in print right now, but I think they are. Um, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and get to it. So uh, top 10, come on, or Simon Games, however you want to pronounce that. Let's hit it. So my number 10 here is a game called Meeple War. Now, Meeple War probably flew under the radar, radar for a lot of people, but it was a really neat uh, mech, uh, kind of a rustic mech uh, style game where you're building your mechs, but you're uh, uh, adding... Uh, different things to them. You're going out, there's an area control aspect to it, there's an engine building aspect as well, uh, where everything is kind of working together. I liked a lot of the different things, but it was really kind of low on a lot of people's radars, and I don't know exactly why, because it was a really fun game, uh, but it just didn't get out there the way it, it, uh, it uh, probably should have, in my opinion. But I really enjoyed the game, and uh, just squeaks in at number 10, Meeple War. My number 9 is a game called Gizmos. Now this one uh, is, is kind of, has been met with a lot of fanfare, uh, a lot of uh, neatness going on here. Uh, it uh, is an interesting game in that you're trying to use all of these different uh, gadgets that you as a man scientists are using to uh, produce all of these different kinds of energies and those energies are being used to score points and 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 there's a lot of neat stuff going on but it's it's really kind of a cerebral kind of game because uh, it goes uh, there's a lot of engine building in it and and I'm not very good at it but I do enjoy the game a lot uh, so it has a lot of uh, neat components to it the marbles that come out I've seen how people have uh, used uh, light strips to really make those marbles kind of glow and pop as they're coming down the chute. Uh, so there's just a lot of neat stuff here, a lot of possibilities that you can work into it as well. I really enjoyed the game from the very first time I played it. That is my number nine, Gizmos. My number eight is a game called Xenoshift. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can buy it. You can buy the core, core box, which I can't remember the uh, s the subtitle of that and that one, but then you also have Xenoshift Dreadmire. That's the one that I have currently on my shelf, and I like it better because it has a little weather mechanism in there that kind of throws uh, a little extra spin on everything else. But I like this cooperative game because uh, you can not only, uh, you have to work on your own area of the base, and everybody else has to work on their areas of the base as well, but you can also, if you've got yours kind of, if you have your hatches kind of buttoned down, so to speak, and you're taking care of it, you can help other people on their parts of the base as well with cards from your hand. So I really do and like that. I like the alien aliens-esque feel to it uh, because that's what happening is aliens are attacking your base and, and you have to kind of fend them off uh, wave after wave after wave. So I really enjoy the game. I like uh, almost everything about it. Uh, it just doesn't hit that table, hit, hit the table that much, but uh, I do enjoy it. It is very fun. That is Xeno Shift, specifically Dreadmire. My number seven is a dungeon crawl from Simon or Come On Games, and that is Massive Darkness. Uh, I do enjoy this game. It is a little swingy though, so you have to go into it prepared for that, but uh, the models, uh, all of the miniatures that they use, the uh, the gameplay is pretty streamlined, not that convoluted, but I mean it has a couple of things in there, but I do enjoy uh, how you can go through uh, this dungeon and uh, uh, attack all of the different monsters, get your bonuses, score, level up your, your person, and, and kind of choose which arc you're going to take uh, as far as the different bonuses that you're going to uh, uh, add to your uh, player sheet there. Just a lot of fun. I really did enjoy the game, uh, but again, it's kind of petered out a little bit as well, but I enjoy it. So that's my number seven, Massive Darkness. Number six is The Godfather, Corleone's Empire. Now this one is a game that is uh, more of an area control game, and it really doesn't feel like The Godfather from what I've heard other people say. Myself, I'm not a huge Godfather fan, so it doesn't really bother me that much that it doesn't feel like the movies. Uh, but I, I did enjoy the game. The gameplay is fun. Uh, putting, <laughs> making people go and swim with the fishes and uh, having them all lay down in the river there 
there. That, that, that was an interesting thing here as well. But I enjoyed a lot of the different aspects of the game, and I thought it was is well done. I thought the components level was probably not as good as uh, Come On is probably known for, but the gameplay was there, and it was a fun experience. So that's why it made my number six, The Godfather. Corleone's Empire. My number five is a game that's probably going to top a lot of people's lists as far as uh, come on games are concerned, but it's only number five for me because the, the, the combat mechanism was not too flavorful for me, and that is Rising Sun. Now, Rising Sun is a, is a great game, don't get me wrong. Uh, the combat mechanism, though, is just, just kind of puts me off. I don't like the idea if somebody has you know more betting chips than you do they're probably going to win unless you get lucky and outsmart them in some way shape or form which they're probably still going to win the battle but you get something out of it that they weren't expecting you to get out of it and i don't know i i like more of the idea of of you know rolling some dice or, or playing a card that adds to my power or something like that that uh i don't know it just the combat mechanism just seemed not out of place but it just not something that i enjoy but i mean i would be kind of you know turning a blind eye to something if if i were to not include this on my list because it is a game that i usually do enjoy it's a kind of game that i usually enjoy and uh there's only one aspect of the game that i don't really care for so it's it's going to make my list my number five rising sun my number four is uh probably one that might not fit with, the, with most of the rest of my list, and that is a game called Dragon Castle. Now, Dragon Castle is really, really neat uh, because it uh, has a whole bunch of these Mahjong-esque tiles that you're uh, creating the board with, and then you're trying to take th those uh, tiles away and, and building up your own uh um, tableau, so to speak, on your own player sheet. And I like that a lot. It's, it's the, the component quality is off the charts here. And uh, there's a number of different maps that you can use as far as starting setups to play. Uh, there's just, all, I wouldn't say endless, but there are a lot of different possibilities with this game. And, and, and the component quality is great. The rules are very streamlined and simple to learn and teach. Uh, so it really just hit on all cylinders for me. Uh, and that's why it made my list. Number four, Dragon Castle. My number three is Rum and Bones Second Tide. Now, I like Rum and Bones First Tide uh, just as fine, the original version, uh, just as fine. I didn't really see that big of a problem with it at all. But they wanted to rework it, so they did, and, and it's just as good, but better. Uh, I like some of the new factions that they came out, um, and it's just one of those really fun MOBA style games that you just, it's just dice chucking, using special abilities, uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun. Very much feels like all of those battle scenes from Pirates of the Caribbean movies that uh, you, we, we've we've mostly all seen and loved, and and so that's really the cool thing. It's a it's a thematic dice chucking, power using, uh, great time, and so that's 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 why it's my number three, Rum and Bones, Second Tide, and my number two is Zombicide Black Plague. Now I've taken some guff about uh, liking Black Plague so much and not liking regular Zombicide that much because. Of of just one basic rule but yeah that that's pretty much it i'll take as much guff as you want from uh to give me about that because it is true i just did not like that rule about friendly fire in the original game and you know what turns out they didn't like it that much either because they changed it in black plague so there you have it i like black plague i don't like zombicide that much now on top of that and really the main reason why i like black plague a little bit more well a lot more than regular zombicide is because it has that medieval theme wrapped around it it's not your everyday run-of-the-mill futuristic zombie apocalypse i think no this happened way back when and uh, we have rustic weapons to work with and magic and some of this that type of stuff as well so that's why i like it a little bit more because it's different than most of your other zombie games that are out there so that's my number two zombie side black play and my number one game from come on or simon games you knew it was coming blood rage it's my favorite game of all time i play this game uh, I <laughs> more than any other game that's out there right now because when I go to conventions, people ask me to teach them how to play. Uh, when I go to the cruise, um, people are wanting to play there. Everywhere I go, people want to play this, and I'm happy to do that with them because it is my favorite game of all time. And so I, I, I have not grown tired of it, and that's one of the more amazing things to me about it because I have played it 
a lot. Let me say that. I have played it a lot and it just doesn't get old. It just doesn't. So I, I really do enjoy the game. I love the card drafting aspect of it. Uh, the miniatures are all very well done, of course, but uh, it, it's it's really the card drafting and the card play and, and, and the the interaction between the players as you go through uh, those uh, action turns is, is what really makes the game flow well for me. But uh, everything else on top of it is just, uh, you know, the, the, the creme de la creme. I mean, it, it is great. It's my favorite game and it's going to be for a very, very, very long time. I don't see anything replacing it in the, in the near future. Um, uh, and I'm leaving the door open there just in case, but it's not likely to happen. That's my number one uh, CMON game, Blood Rage. So thank you so much for joining me. I, I certainly appreciate it. I hope that some of this stuff was maybe uh, news to you, uh, but I, I know that there were probably a, a lot of the games that were on this list that you probably knew that I liked and probably knew that it was going to show up on this list. But uh, hopefully there were a couple in there that were... Uh, surprises for you and you enjoy them and maybe you can go check them out as well thanks for joining me i certainly appreciate it we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side take care